Today, we are finally going to be addressing the suspension issue on my 1988 Saab 900 Turbo. We've got new shocks, bushings, and more. Let's get into the repairs. Quite a few parts we are going to be replacing today. First off, most obviously, you can see we have four new Bilstein shocks. These are B4, which are essentially the OEM equivalent shocks. I have their B6s on my 9.3, which is more of a sportier ride. Um, for the 900 though, at least for now, I'm just looking for a comfortable cruiser. These are some Powerflex sway bar bushings. Um, the car has a ton of body roll, so these Powerflex bushings are hopefully going to help with fixing that. Some control arm bushings. This is our special suspension tool, which I will show how to use this. Uh, this makes replacing basically everything suspension wise that's not the shock much easier. We also have two new tie rods. Not sure why they came in two different boxes, but you can ask Rock Auto that. And then we have four new ball joints from Moog. I debated going with lowering springs on this car and maybe I still will in the future, but again, that kind of contradicts my whole statement earlier on wanting to stick with a comfortable ride. I'm sure there's also many more bushings I could be replacing, but for now we're just going to start with these and hope that solves a lot of my issues. So without further ado, let's get started. I wanna start in the rear because in the rear, all we are replacing is the shock. So you can see this has uh, seen some better days this bushing is uh, not doing too hot. In order to remove this, there is just a 19 bolt and a nut on the other side. And then a 17 double nut up top here, which uh, once I get the skunk off, you'll be able to see a little bit better. So that was on there pretty tight, as you could tell. Um, and again, I have a uh, wrench on the back side. But I want to do that just to help break it loose at least. So even still, there we go. Now it's starting to come loose. Now if you're in a rust belt or rusty area, one thing I saw some people recommend is putting like a plastic cap or something over this area. Thankfully my car is, as you can tell, not rusted. So it makes this a little bit easier for me but it is very possible to snap these studs off and hopefully that won't happen to me here. It might be hard to see because of how dirty this is, but there are essentially two nuts stacked on top of each other. So I'm going to use a wrench on the bottom with a ratchet on top to hopefully loosen these apart from each other. There's just so much gunk. So you can see this bottom one is twisting the shock as I uh, try to loosen it. So one thing I can do is stick a little wrench around this knob up top here. And putting the wrench on that knob up top is holding the shock, preventing it from rotating, which is allowing us to loosen this nut here. I'll pull off our old bushing and washer. So what I had to do on the other side to get this loose, because it was almost seized into the lower control arm, is I took a small half inch extension, stuck it on the jack, and then just gently jacked it up. And there it popped free. And now the problem is it expands itself as soon as you let go of it. So you gotta like kind of compress it and pull it out at the same time. I had initially thought that these shocks were B6s because they're blue. Uh, clearly they're not, so I don't know if they're some kind of knockoffs or what, but you can see these look like they're uh, original Saab bushings in here. So these bushings definitely have uh, seen better days. So our Bilstein shock is, like I mentioned, an OEM replacement. So instead of two locking nuts on the top, it only has a uh, one locking washer 
Um, and before we install it, we need to pop off this washer and this bushing. We're going to need to compress it and then slide it in. So the way I'm getting this to stay compressed is just putting two pieces of duct tape on either side and uh, let's slide it in. Now I'll grab my bushing, washer, and nut just to hold that there. So we can pull our duct tape off. Now we want to watch it hopefully slide right into position. Same kind of deal here, uh, although again we just have the one locking nut, so I can't just tighten it down. I need to hold this piece here at the top to allow me to tighten it down. We're going to tighten it until this bushing right here starts to kind of get smashed. Uh, we can now focus our attention on this bottom bolt, which again, I uh, struggled with quite heavily on the other side. So what I'm going to hopefully do is just compress this control arm and kind of lightly pry or hammer being careful not to hit the new bushing to hopefully get this thing lined up. And that is our rear suspension done for now. Let's move on to the front. There's three things we need to do before we start on the front suspension. Number one, and most importantly, is installing our lower control arm axle removal tool. Um, this makes getting things like ball joints, the axle, a lot of other components in this area out a lot easier. Second, we need to break loose the axle nut. Uh, we'll need to remove the axle partially to uh, get access to the lower ball joint. And thirdly, I'm going to at least try to start breaking loose the strut mount bolt at the very top in the engine bay. So right between the upper control arm and the frame, there is a slot in the body right behind where the brake line is at. And this tool is designed to sit right in there, just like that. So now when we jack up the car, it'll uh, keep the suspension set in a place where it makes removal of a lot of parts much easier. If your car is running factory shocks like mine is, uh, there will be two locking washers on top of each other right down in there. Um, essentially, you got to spin the first one off, then you can get to the second one. Having the weight of the car on the shock should prevent this from spinning, hopefully, so let's give it a try. So that actually wasn't too bad. See, it's already loose. Let's get the car up in the air. With the wheel off, let's do a quick tour of what we have going on down here. Obviously, first thing you might notice is spring and shock are actually separate from each other. Um, up here attached to the bottom of the spring and the top of the upper control arm. By the way, you can see our suspension tool is now in place holding that control arm up. That is one of our ball joints. Obviously our shock right here, which we'll be replacing our tie rod, which we will be replacing. We're now looking at the lower control arm. Here's where the shock bolts into. Here's our sway bar with the sway bar bushing we'll be replacing. And then this is our other ball joint. So I'm gonna start by uh, disassembling all this stuff. We'll start by popping off this bolt right here for the shock. This bushing is just falling apart. And then our shock just comes straight out. I'll start by removing the ball joint. This ball joint is kind of stuck in here. All the bolts have been removed. Um, so there is a special tool you can use to help remove the ball joints. This I just got from AutoZone. Essentially, this part kind of slides underneath the ball joint here. And then this piece goes on the stud you tighten it and it essentially pushes this up and pops the ball joint out. I just pull the whole hub down far enough so it unhooks.
there's our old ball joint removed and obviously the boot just got a little bit damaged from uh, that tool uh, that's obviously fine but these had a lot of play in them so this is our new moog ball joint uh, and you can see this i can't even move it you know once i have it in the car i'll be able to move it but you can tell this is much stiffer and uh how it should be so let's slide this in This one happened to come with new bolts, so I'll install those too. And since we have better access on this, I'm just gonna use a hammer. One other thing I will also do, just in case this nut gets moved, is count the number of rotations. So one, two, until it comes off so that way again we can try to get the new tie rod as close as possible to the uh, same location. Here's our new tie rod end from Delphi. Same kind of deal as the ball joint locking nut on the bottom. Line it up, get it back in there. So essentially what's happening is the locking washer is doing its job, which means as I tighten this it's spinning the stud that it's loose tightening on so it's not actually tightening down the nut. So what a trick I learned from my buddy is we're gonna stick the impact on here and at the same time kind of push down and lightly hammer and hope that'll uh, help get it on the rest of the way. Tighten down this little locking nut and I can already see it's a bit off but there's not much I can do. Time to tackle the tricky one which is this lower ball joint and then also the sway bar bushing. So there's a little bracket for the sway bar, which is held on by the same two bolts as the ball joint. And you can see this upper ball joint bolt here. It's a bit too long for us to not only get the ball joint tool in there once we have it loose, but it's also too long for us to just take the nut off, period. So we gotta get a little creative with this. move the hub quite a bit, but should allow me to sort of pop the axle out. Not the whole way, but just enough like that. And there will be just enough room in here to slide the ball joint tool in. Pull this sway bar end off. It's just kind of in the way. Now I'm going to uh, loosen this the rest of the way. Depending on how you look at it, now comes the fun part or the tedious part of this video. So here's our old sway bar bushing. Honestly, it's not really torn. This one does have a crack in it here. Kind of hard to see on camera. And it's definitely a little rough around the edges here, um, but it's not terribly bad, I guess. Um, we're going to be replacing that with a power flex bushing. So the re only real way to get this out is by cutting it out. So I'm going to start by trying to cut it out from this end here. If you have a press, that's really the best way to do this. I don't have a press, so I'm going to be using my little Harbor Freight vise here. Uh, it took me quite a while to do this on the other side. Essentially what I'm going to be doing is trying to stick this side in since it's kind of the uh, thinner side. Um, I'm going to put a lot of grease to lube up both this side, the inside of this. Once I have it in here, enough to where it's kind of supporting itself, I'm just making sure it's perfectly centered. So what I learned in doing the other side is no matter how hard I push this way, you can already see it's not wanting to go in straight. 
uh, it's not going to work. So when I got to about this point, what I would do is grab some pliers and kind of try to pinch this little lip inside the sleeve here. Oh, hello. That's something. It's now very crooked. Okay, I'm scared. Let's see if we can... No, it's gonna slide down. Ah, it's coming out. Yep. See, we were very close there. Okay, fellas, this is literally my second try. We're so close. Oh, it's gonna pop. Oh, there it goes. No way. Everything is easier the uh, second time you do it. Let's go. All right. Whoa, I forgot the camera zoomed in. Boom, let's get it installed. And I put some grease on the inside of the bushing. Just gotta slide that over there like so. Stick a flathead in here to uh, line up those holes a little better. Got all three of those started. Now I just gotta tighten them all down and we can install our shock. Our front shocks are very similar to the rears. You can see once again, two bushings, two washers and a locking nut at the top. So I'm going to remove the locking nut, the top washer and the top bushing. We'll slide onto that down there, which I've just greased up. Put the shock up through the shock tower there and then add the bushing, the washer, and the lock nut through on the engine bay side. Not going to use an impact on these because I don't want to damage this new bushing here. down the lug bolts. And more importantly, the axle nut. I think once I can get an alignment on this car, I wanna take it up one of my favorite mountain roads or just on some twisty roads and really see how much the handling has improved. The car beforehand was very floaty. It had so much body roll. So while I don't think just these repairs alone will 100% fix this and make this thing handle perfectly, it should be a huge, huge step in the right direction. And I cannot wait to drive this thing, as well as wait for the suspension to settle a little bit to hopefully wear now it all, well, sits evenly. But with that being said, thank you guys all so much for watching. Again, make sure to check out my merchandise if you're interested. Link at the top of the description as well as my Patreon if you want to help support the channel some more. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed or found it informative. I'll see you all next time.